when you study Jyotishna, there are times when there will be the state of confusions. And as Einstein said, it's okay to have confusions in life. It's okay to live with non-duality. It's oh, sorry. It's okay to live with duality. That something works, something doesn't work. Because when you stay with a problem for a long period of time, eventually it will. It is going to answer. After a certain point of time in Jyotish, like give your time absorption time. Like your brain has a particular type of elasticity, means the learning curve. So you read something first time, and you will not understand it. You read it second time, third time, fourth time. Eventually, it will get into the blood. And then it depends on everyone's brains is different, everyone's priority is different. So how much time, effort and energy, and this, this is a universal principle, right? Wherever you will apply your energy, whichever thought, that thing will grow. So you apply your energy in idiotic things, that thing will grow. You apply your energy into people, you expect something from someone, you are, you are putting yourself for disappointment. Because you are expecting that other people will behave as you. Let's suppose you are expecting that everyone will drive carefully in country. You are expecting yourself to be miserable throughout the life. It's you who has the problem, nobody else. So whenever you find a problem in someone else, not just look around. It's you who, are, who is suffering. Whether it's a relationship, whether it's car driving, whether it is business, whether it's internet. It is you who is suffering, nobody else. So you have to make conscious choices. And how do you make conscious choices? By eliminating people, eliminating bad decisions from your life. So like this morning, I received an email. And the title of the email says, Yehi Banda Chahiye. Which means that I want to marry this particular person only. Isi ko sudharna hai. You tell me the remedy of this. So whenever you receive an email like this, it's a clear case of they are expecting that someone else will behave like me. So Jyotish is a correction. Jyotish is this is a science of self-correction basically that you know something. Then you say, okay, this is my problem. This is my graph. I'm going to correct. But when you send an email saying Ki, I want to live with this person only, you are going and this is how basically people get trapped into, uh, they spend a lot of money on opais, they spend a lot of money on uh, different things and the result is absolute zero. Other day, uh, a very, very young kid come, came to office and she had a Rahu exalted fifth house. A dispositor of Rahu, 8th house. Her question was whether I will be able to do love marriage. Rahu is the king of illusions. Rahu was exalted. The dispositor goes in 8th house of Mrityu, disappointments, humiliations, setbacks and death. She is not going to get married to that person. Very simple. Is there any remedy to it? Even if you do something about remedy, let's suppose, you know, you, you defy the odds, you, you keep on clinging to that person and you get married. What will happen after marriage? Will you be happy in that relationship? So as a very wonderful advice I gave to her was, no, please leave this particular person, move from this person. We'll get someone else, get married with their parents' wish, do not fall into love traps. Every time you will face failure. It's our chart, no? it's our Rahu, nobody else. It's our karma, it's our karma that we have cut Rahu himself. No one else. So when you are bound for such failures, no? you will get these kind of illusions. So wherever the Rahu is in your chart, you will have illusions about that particular house. You will have <coughs> lot of misunderstanding, misconception and the day the illusion will go away, you will feel, okay, I was, you know, idiot for believing that this thing will happen. This is how any chart will work. So the more clear you will get about your chart, more clear will you get about your understanding of your chart, 
more happy you will become because you will not have expectations from anyone then you know what is your chart and that is why whenever somebody tells me that this is who i am this is uh, i be where i belong to this is what i can do in my life or this is what i can do for you i tell them seriously i know my chart very well i know what i'm going to get how much i'm going to get when i'm going to get so doesn't matter who you are what you can do what you cannot do if it's not in my it is in my chart na it will not get to me so we'll start with today's session you can raise your hands uh, tell me what you have done research on where you are uh, stuck and i and hopefully i can help you problem to the father will it be seen where aries is placed in the father's chart okay so if you want to simply judge what kind of problem will happen to father just ask how how was the father's profession was it related to some kind of machines Thank or you, simple it, it is it's very simple right saturn oh. aries then you can all then you can see first you did the prediction then you say okay then your problem your father will have problems related to bones like a uh, uh, what do you call it? you know when you get the pain in your joints arthritis okay. Right. Thank you. That kind of a problem can happen to father. So take care of it during that period of the year, Saturn Mars the year. At the same time, I'm like very, very happy to like learn from it because I've been following you for a couple of years, and but your knowledge is just like uh, I think is on another level to just uh, to sum it up. And um, I think the saying, you know, what when the student is ready, the teacher will be like will summon. I think it's one hundred percent true in my case. So thank you for that, uh, Dipanshu Gary. Uh, I have a couple of questions. So yeah, yeah. when uh, we are talking about retro planets, like retrograde planets, usually because I had this issue. Um, When you go back, let's say when um, Rishi Parashara or Rishi Birugu Nandi Nadi, so when we go with one system, should we like skip the other or like let's say um, aspects, for example, in uh, or conjunction? When in Birugu Nadi we go uh, with the trines, right? The conjunction of trines. Uh, but with Parashara it's different. So. We cannot, or we shouldn't, the systems. Okay, so I understand your dilemma. You're saying, okay, so Brigham and Nadi is telling you always mm. look for the trines and yes. uh, make yeah. predictions based on it. If uh, Shukar is trying to Ketu, the person will have trouble in marriage, mm. or will not get support in marriage. If Merkur is trying to Ketu, the person will have break in education. This is basically exactly. the Brigham and Nadi says. Yes. And Rishi Prasha says, okay, you have to only take Kendra Trikona and. Uh, <clears throat> this kind of con or the proper conjunctions. So let me clear what the Brigham and Nadi is and what is actually based on. Whenever you follow, if you go to chapter one of BPHS, mm-hmm. where it is written the different sun is a karka for father, sun is a karka for health, vitality, mm-hmm. Shukra governs relationships. There, in that chapter only, there is a particular shlok which says if you want to judge father, you take ninth from sun, seventh from Shukra, tenth from Saturn. And Marshi Prashad has given out. When you detail and elaborate that in your chapter, that becomes your Nadi technique. Okay. So, so it's in, in okay. yes, in VPHS also, the trines are considered as positive. Like, for example, what is my support? For example, mm-hmm. if I'm Lagna, my support is nine thousand fifth house. Yes. Exact. My support is my father, ninth house, and my kid. Yeah. Okay, this is basically what my support is, five and nine. So any plant wherever it is sitting, fifth and ninth from it will always be supporting or pushing that native for achieving its results. Hmm. And you can apply that in BPHS system as well, or the Rishi Parashar system as well. But then it comes. How do you see Kendra? Because Kendra is the Kendra is like the four squares, like the Union Junction. When you stand at the Union Junction, that's what Kendra is. And every four road, every single way will take you to another distance. Like if you look at the first house, it will say, "Take care of yourself." Yes. Fourth house will say, "Take care of your emotional needs, security." Yes. Seventh house will say, "Take care of your partners. Look for others' point of view. Take care of others." 
ten thousand would say focus on status, and that is why whenever the dasha of two kendra lords will run. Suppose you have a planet in fourth house and tenth house, first house and seventh house, first and fourth, fourth or seventh, any kendra to each other, or kendra to each other even like third and sixth kendra to each other. They have different agendas, and that dasha will never be good. Because the agenda of first house is focus on me. On your self, on your body. Yes. And the agenda of tenth house is focus on status. Mm -hmm. And even if you have to, you know, decompose your body, you have to extremely work hard. Tenth house is working hard. You have to work mm -hmm. hard, and even you know, do not care about your body. Still focus on my career. So this will be like a conflict in the shah. Your Mahadasha Lord is telling you, focus on yourself. What are you doing? And this is what happens in the dasha of first of first house uh, whenever the planet is setting over there. So people who have a loaded tenth house, they will not care about themselves much. They will focus on status, power, authority. Yes. When the plant will have more, when you are running a dasha of plants in fourth house, you will say, "I want peace in my life. I want rest. I do not want problems. I just want to sleep properly, take care of my emotional body." This is what I want to do in my life. So you can follow Maharishi Parashar and Brigodha Nidari at same point of time, because both of them will eventually conclude at one point. Mm. They are saying same things at from different perspective. Yeah, from different angles. Exactly. That's why I was somehow confused. You know, when should I? How like how should I apply this and apply that? But you cleared it up. So thank you. Any other uh, question you have? Yeah, I have a, a other question. Yeah. For example, if we had a private yoga, like an exchange between, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, Taurus ascendant, you have uh, Leo fourth house and uh, Capricorn, or sorry, Aquarius uh, tenth house, mm -hmm. but uh, Sun or uh, Shani in Leo and uh, Sun is in Aquarius. And there is a prevalent yoga. When we let's say uh, make a prediction, should we take into consideration the prevalent yoga, or the prevalent yoga will only take effect in the result? Okay. I mean, when the activation happened. So like, whenever uh, you are considering a planet, whenever you are considering a dasha result, let's suppose the native starts a sun dasha. So I have to. Well, I, I mean, I I always tell people ask these questions from yourself. Okay, yeah. and you should make a note of it. That whenever you are looking at a dasha result or a mahadasha and dasha result, ask yourself whether the planet is exalted, debilitated, yeah, special position, yes, yeah. retrograde, yeah. exchange with anyone, like sixth and eighth exchange, fourth and tenth exchange, and what it has exchanged. Like for example, if your kid goes out and says, "I have exchanged," in exchange, I've got this. You have to ask him, in turn of what. You have got this in in exchange of what? If you have ex, if you have got fame, sun tenth house, in exchange of what? What you have given? So he says, okay, I've given my mental peace, Saturn fourth house. Yeah, emotional intelligence, <laughs> the fourth house. <laughs> so in dasha of sun, two things will happen. First of all, you will sacrifice your home, your mental peace. Second thing, you will gain status. So uh, the uh, rishis will tell you, okay, it's a very good exchange. The kendra lords have exchanged themselves. Yeah. So one thing has to go down, another thing will go up. The so Saturn so fourth house. The two will be uh, activating. That's why I was thinking, like maybe if uh, one will happen, the other one might not happen. But at both at the same time will activate themselves. Yes, because Sun is sitting in Saturn house, and especially in Sun Saturn dasha, hmm. you will see a very prominent result of this conjunction. Uh, thank you so much. And, uh, and also, uh, you can use it on another level of karkas. Like for example, you can say. Your mother health will go down, and after your mother health will go down, your your profession will peak in life. You can always use significators in it. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I hope I'm not taking like too much time, but I hope uh, my questions will like raise the level. Uh, two more questions, just uh, for retrograde planets. Mm -hmm. Let's say we have, uh, because they will give uh, effect differently, right? Yeah. Uh, if we have, let's say, for example, a debilitated planet like uh, Mangal, okay. is debilitated and is retro. Yeah. 
then in this uh, like this situation will give a good result let's not say good or bad result will give uh, like a reverse result no it came from the, uh, the one of the articles of Jay Basin Saab. Being happy and blissful is the first requirement of human soul. But happiness is not achieved by fancy jargons or course. Happiness is achieved when you work to solve your inner conflicts. Happiness is achieved when you work to remove the energy deficit of your system. Hi, I am Dupan Shugiri. I am the author of Amazon bestseller Rituals of Happy Soul. I have written a simple but yet most powerful book with series of rituals of universe which can help you out to resolve your inner conflicts. It's a step-by-step, do-it-yourself guide. Anyone can perform these rituals and see the Effect. I wish you best of luck. I'm looking for your feedback once you read the book. Thank you. So, what once in one of the magazines he wrote, Ki, a retrograde and debilitated planet can give results of an exalted planet. Mm. That's now, what I uh, was thinking. Yeah. yeah, but then when later on uh, he realized his mistake and he was countered, he again said, Okay, I did a mistake. It is not supposed to work in this way. But by that time, it was extremely late. And you mm. see, after 20 years also, we are. We have to explain this that this is actually not work, and I tell you the reason why this the the reason of debilitation is thanable. The reason of retrogression is chastable. These two are extremely two different strengths. Okay. Chasta means how fast. I mean, what is your emotional strength? Whether you were retrograde, vakri, ati vakri, shigra, ati shigra. What was your emotional strength? How fast you were? How slow you were? Based on this, you get the chastable of a ground. Right. Mm. It has nothing to do with your which part of the space you are in. Mm. Like you can be in Aries, Taurus, Gemini, doesn't matter. But your speed depends your chase double. Your stand ball is de actually dependent on which part of the space you are in, and then you get the exalted or debilitated but debilitated strength, which is stand ball. So these two are extremely different strengths. They do have different uh, ways to work. They work in different manners. So these were not related. They do not overcompensate or undercompensate each other. And that is the reason Maharishi Prasha described six types of strength. I mean, he could have given that like, calculate all this and this is a complete schedule. Focus on this. Just mm -hmm. if plant goes above this, it's good. It goes bad below this. But he, I mean, Maharishi Prasha is such a brilliant, brilliant sutra he has given. He said, now I will tell you the six types of strength based on which you will be able to tell the good and bad results in different areas of life. Mm -hmm. So a plant can be good in materialistic in terms, but, yes. but bad in a very extremely different area. Mm. So it is a, there's a bulb which defines your feeling. So you might not be feeling extremely good, but your dasha is running extremely fine. Mm. It's only mood is spoiled. Mm. So do not that mix is, different yeah. types of strength. This is the answer to it. Oh, okay, got it. So like for example, it might be your business is running perfectly, but your married life is going haywire. That's what okay. Yeah. So my last question, uh, since you know we are in the profession of helping people, mm -hmm. uh, let's say for example, if you want to discuss about the um, profession of someone, mm -hmm. uh, I, we learned in one of your uh, lectures, like you go, Basically, Shani is Karka for your profession, and you look 10th from Saturn, or from your Shani is your karma. So, in determining or like uh, going to, let's say, uh, narrowing the uh, possibilities or the options for this person, should we like take a, let's say, a, a route to go to the to go there, or just one uh, thing like uh, let's say your profession is Saturn or tenth from Saturn, tenth house we go to the Shamsha, or uh, how we like let's say go about okay. this. So there are, there is a three step I'm going to tell you which I follow, mm. and it works. The only thing is. It requires a lot of practice and there's nothing. I mean, always remember, there are no secret techniques. There are no magical formulas. It's yeah. only hard work you have to put in to narrow down your techniques. And mm -hmm. this is how it actually goes. You look at what is 10th law in Rashi chart is doing. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, if 10th law, what plants are, if 10th law is more strong, the plants in 10,000 is more strong. That's one. Okay. 
then you see which Navaj dental or, or the plant in 10th house is sitting. And then finally you come to the chance level. Yeah. Based on all three, and this is what I actually do, and this is how I actually predict on various forums, Facebook, I use okay. this particular technique only. But the thing is, it took me almost four and a half, five years to mm. teach it back to the students that if this is the combination, this you can expect from the terms of profession. For example, yesterday I asked the, the same girl who has his son Saturn. She had a Mercurian Navanch, Mercurian Dashanch rising, mm. and uh, Mercurian Dashanch rising, and Mercury was in Taurus in 12th house. Mm. I asked, do you work in any kind of financial coding or financial management? Mm. And she said, no, I'm on IT. And I said, I know I, you are in IT. That's why I'm asking coding. Yeah. <laughs> Gemini, I, I know <laughs> this much. Uh -huh. I could have said you work in IT. It's very simple for me. I'm asking yeah. you, do you work in financial coding or financial kind of management? When I say financial management means you manage some kind of money in terms of, you know, your money comes here and you park it somewhere because that's what the Gemini does, sorting out. But it's in Taurus, so sorting out money. Yeah. And she said, oh, uh, I'm working in insurance in IT. Yeah, it's very <laughs> did, did I say something, anything else? I ask yeah. the same thing. Now. I mean, this is how much you can narrow down. But I'm telling you, even after asking client a very same question, hmm. the client will say no. And you'll be like, the thing did I ask it. something else? I ask very specifically financial coding. Coding means IT. He said, no, I work in IT. Right? <laughs> they said, okay, it's I work okay. in insurance. <laughs> Yeah. What what kind of answer is this? Uh, there is another chart I remember. I said, uh, I think you have a very bad married life, and uh, the bad I don't see marriage life to be extremely uh, positive here. And she said, No, I'm fine. It's marriage is going absolutely fine. I was like, you know, then chart is wrong because I've I've taught all of you that what does the Navanch lagna means? Yeah. And Navanch lagna is bad. Marriage is bad. Very simple. And then she's uh, because uh, you know what we from seven years we are living separately. We have different jobs in different cities, so we're not living together. So basically, that <laughs> it's not. But marriage is fine. Yeah. Sometimes you know you have to set like this in front of client. Like, yeah, did I set something else to you? I ask a very simple question. Your marriage exactly, life is bad. Exactly. Yeah, but they're like, no, marriage is fine because see, in their mind, their marriage is fine. Yeah. Hmm. It's normal. It's different, yes, yes. But chart is telling you another story. So I'm telling you, sometimes huh, you have to ask counter questions to say, yeah. okay, tell me something more about your marriage. Because I want to really hear whether the chart is wrong. Yeah, you said it actually in one lecture, like uh, people will lie, charts won't charts will lie. Never. No? I mean, and, uh, uh, other day, I tell you, my three, three of my failed predictions. Other day, the person walked in office, uh, Gemini rising, Sun, Venus and Lagna, Mercury second house. Mm. So you, I mean, imagine the chart. Huh? You have to always imagine Graha as a person. Gemini rising, mm. Sun, Venus and Lagna. You know who the personality will be, okay? The person mm. will have luster in his face. The person will be extremely good. Mm. And I said, okay, and the Navanch had the Sun Saturn and Navanch had 7th house Sun Saturn. Navanch Lagna was empty, Sun Saturn 7th house. The Dashanch has a Rahu rising in Sagittarius and Jupiter was in 8th. And the Dasha was Rahu Jupiter. It means the native's business is going to end. I said, are you mm -hmm. closing any business? Are you going through transformation from any business? They said, no. I said, is your married life bad? He said, no. And then I said, the, I don't think the birth time is right. Uh, because Maybe. this is not how it's supposed to be. No, Rahu Jupiter, I know the, the professional end. Then the person said, oh, I can, it can be because uh, my mother is not alive. So my uh, sister gave me this date of uh, birth and uh, I think the date of birth or time can be, yeah. can go sideways. And uh, then said, okay, then please bring the right time. Of course, yeah, <laughs> because we cannot go further with it. Yes. Because in their mind, see, the client mind is, he, it, one or two days doesn't matter. Mm. In client mind, it is going like this. You it, you know that every minute counts here. The red bull will change. Okay. In every minute, the red bull changes. Yeah. Uh, 
there's another case the, the person who worked in a financial industry and knew him he worked in the financial industry i looked at his chart and i said i don't think this is a chart is a timing difference there must be timing difference because i don't see financial chart then you the chart then he confirmed back in his village and he said okay it's two days off two days so he said but you know till now every astrologer i've been to they have used same chart they have made predictions they are uh, they have done i've done <laughs> remedies based on same chart Never but you're the first person to tell me then when a correction happened you know what came in lagna debilitated shukra came in lagna mercury then sign rising trader sign rising with shukra that's a financial chart i said no not that but time is absolutely correct we don't have to worry about it hmm. so you see these are examples where the client will tell you or trick you that this is my chart and uh, you have to actually ask them back questions that this is this is not how it's supposed to work so yeah. always focus on your chart your, the principles you have drawn the lines you have drawn it will always work do not go sideways with it thank you so much sir uh this one point you said uh, for the hard work and stuff i absolutely agree you know to get uh, two three charts where they talked about people suffering that's what they believed mm -hmm. people suffering from uh, from from black magic vashikaran mm -hmm. i how to guide these people or to tell them uh, tell them do the hanuman chalisa every morning raise your energy levels that no bhoot pe prashad who ever comes in your contact gets mukti read bhagavat i mean once you get uh, into that energy energy zone nobody can harm you i'm telling you i mean there is uh, this is absolutely what i call another kind of a nonsense uh, which goes on uh, vashikaran i mean you can't even vashikaran yourself here i mean if if you can control yourself now half of your problems will go away yeah. forget about controlling anyone else you can't control your own cats who live with you 24/7 and if you are dreaming that you will be able to control somebody else based on your desires you have to be extremely powerful and and if somebody can do that i will i will, I will suggest you know, i will leave jyotish and learn that because that's what is there it's extremely complicated to study all of this and you know contemplate and then you find out one dictum throughout the day uh, and then you think okay uh, this actually works this doesn't work and if i can do that with the help of a, some kind of a powder vashikaran or you know whatever kind of resources they are going to use uh, it's difficult now tell right. them to do anuman chalisa i mean see uh, in sundarkanda there are certain chopais which uh, which tell you the power of uh, how great the hanuman hanuman ji is and how powerful he is so once you read the chopais na you know understand ki nobody can stand in front of her nobody because when he was standing na in front of ravan he was saying ki janu main tori prabhu tai matlab he was telling ravan ki main janta hu ki who you are don't tell me so if he can do that in standing in front of ravan i mean bhagwan shiv ji says uh, he is the one who eats kal for breakfast every morning so jab praying to such a god and when your energy level is raised to a certain point what happens is all these things affect all the negative things affects to people who are on lower energy scale and this is and the reason uh, you will find a floor in this scale is if you find a house where people get angry easily if you find yourself getting into fights very frequently if you see you are not able to focus on your happiness zone that's what the negative energy in, inside you and to sort it out just focus on why i'm getting angry where i should get angry or Why, what is troubling me that the anger is coming out because the problem lies inside you so all these things na uh, i would say this just it goes away with the help of hanuman chalisa this one and also when i was reading the nakshatra padas also i realized uh, one of the uh, strongest building blocks that we need to build is understanding circuits yeah. right this is like if you get this right it's like a repeatable and process across if you want to understand nakshatras na read the chart of every us president you will find one common fact see to rule this earth you require mass you cannot rule this earth without mass 
mass make rulers. Take 15 US presidents. See chart of every president who has ruled America. We'll find out mass. There's no other plan which can give you rulerships. That's that's how you master nakshatras. You see the, the current nakshatra book now, when I was writing the last part, part three, which is the thickest part, I think, 280 pages it got. The original version was 400 something pages, 450, 460 pages was the original version, which I sent out. Then uh, the person who was writing, is it? There is a lot of things which does not belong to nakshatras and you have nakshatra palas basically you have just written to nakshatras and you have entered somehow in between is it? but this is how I actually write things when you write you don't care ki what is the palas and where are the nakshatras you just keep on writing and I said you can't print in this in nakshatra palas because this is nakshatras so what I did I took out 150 pages and that's how it's an edited book but I'm thinking at one point of time, when I will again get the energy and uh, that kind of uh, enthusiasm, <coughs> then I will write again. I will complete that book. And that book is about uh, why the nakshatras are like this, why the Martian nakshatras are placed in this particular zones and why there is a symbol, why Marikshitra nakshatra, I mean, I tell you a very small example, right? Marikshitra nakshatra. Everyone says it's a, it's a it's a head of a deer. Everyone says there's a deer. You know what? Is, it's a very simple thing. We all miss that point. And one day it just clicks when you sit in that zone. Marigisira, the anklets of deer. It's the fastest growing hormone on earth. And that is what Marigisira rules your hormonal capabilities. Whenever Marigisira is afflicted, hormones are afflicted. In Chinese medicine, the anklets of deer, there's a medicine from made from it to control hormones. Now you understand Mariksira, why there's a Mariksira, there, there's a anklet. This is where the need I mean, they have written so subtle that you cannot miss it. They said, it's right there, Mariksira, I'm writing it down for you. It will control hormones in your body. That's only one part. So when you see this, and I was like, okay, every time it was in my front, why I didn't pay attention to the anklets? It's the fastest growing hormone. In whole universe, that's the fastest growing hormone. And this is what it represents. It controls your hormonal body. Whenever Mariksara is afflicted in any chart, look in any chart you have. Let's suppose your Mariksara is in 12th house affliction, your dad body part, and it, it means your fit. Uh, uh, let's suppose it's in 4th house Mariksara. There's a affliction to Mariksara Nakshatra by Latta, by Malefic Planet. You will have problems in your chest. Very simple. Now you tell me which book can give you this kind of a knowledge. Except universe. Only universe can give you that download click in one go that, okay, this is for Mariksara. So when you write down any book with energy, the laptop, I mean, my laptop has broken keys, so I use a different kind of a typewriter kind of a keyboard, which is a mechanical keyboard. So because in that uh, anger and that, that kind of energy, you just keep on typing and I hit, and the buttons will eventually worn out. Because your hand speed cannot control the brain speed. So you keep on uh, keep on focusing what why it is written. So mass is rulers on earth. Do you want to do research on nakshatras? Take the people who have ruled this earth. You'll find Martian nakshatras Rajyog. There are Rajyog within nakshatras. And when they get fallet, they give you absolute results. When they say absolute means it's in only one to two percent of chart, but they are, they give you results. Being happy and blissful is the first requirement of human soul. But happiness is not achieved by fancy jargons or course. Happiness is achieved when you work to solve your inner conflicts. Happiness is achieved when you work to remove the energy deficit of your system. Hi, I'm Dupanshu Giri. I'm the author of Amazon bestseller Rituals of Happy Soul. I have written a simple but yet most powerful book with series of rituals of universe which can help you out to resolve your inner conflicts. It's a step-by-step, do-it-yourself guide. Anyone can perform these rituals and see their I wish you best of luck. I'm looking for your feedback once you read the book. Thank you.